Hi there, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Tonight I'm just going to do a quick little tutorial over how to do different types of leaves. I'm going to be using a number 12 flat brush by Pratt Platt. It's a one stroke brush. I'm going to be using Thicket Happy Green and then also a floating medium. These are folk art products and they are multi-surface as far as the paints go. The plaid uh, floating medium is just their plaid floating medium. So, but I'm, I'm using it actually with this uh, green. So I'm going to go ahead, the first thing I'm going to do is before I start doing two different colors at the same time is load one side of the brush into the green, the thicket, and then the other side into the floating medium. And I'm just going to show you a couple little uh, leaves that you can do. Now you can actually start off by being on the chisel edge if you want and lessen up your pressure. Or you can do it, you know, from the side, push and do a pull like that. Either way. The main thing is, is that you've got to play with it a little bit just to see basically what works for you and, and what you're actually trying to create. And this one I'm just using the whole chisel and then just turning it. You make that a little bit longer, you make it shorter. So we'll do it again. I'm going to start on the chisel edge and then just push my brush down, give it a little wave just to make it look more natural. And then you might come up beside it if you want to do the same thing and then just have this one come up a little bit like that. I'm just doing this also on practice paper and come like that and then curve it over and come down if you want to have it look this is all just using one color and a little bit of floating medium and you can use a, a lighter shade of green if you choose to do so so again you can create this if you want to with just the actual full part of the brush you're still lessening up on the pressure and then turning it if you go that this route or and let me go ahead and finish out another another stroke here just to give you an idea what it would look like just kind of give it a little bit of wave because really a lot of times the stuff is not actually perfectly straight and with using the floating medium on this I actually needed it to color it in a little bit and then you can come up here and turn your brush a little bit and then come back down. That didn't do quite the clean crossover that I wanted it to, but anyhow. And then just bring it down. So either way, you know, if you want thinner or thicker petals, you know, do it however you're, whatever you're comfortable with or what works for your design. Now I'm going to double load my flat brush and move into the leaves, you know, different variety of leaves that you can paint. You can start off by doing kind of like a V shape, just tap your brush, and then, then this way you know that this is where you're gonna you're gonna start. You can wiggle your brush a lot. That's kind of a short stubby one. Let me try that again. Wiggle your brush a lot so it's just like many little back and forth. And then go over here and do the same thing. Many just keep doing it, pulling it, and pulling it through. Or you can do what I typically do a lot of times is you can do that. Do a couple starter strokes and then I like a lot of times to make big 
movements with my brush. Almost like you're mopping the floor. I hear I say that a lot. Mop, mop. You want to try to get into the center as much as possible so that you don't have a lot of excess paint. But it's really something that you just need to sit down and practice. Some of the leaves that I do, and I don't always start with a V, but one I like to do is where I have each side is different on the outside part. So you have a dark and you have the light on the outside. And you can come down the middle if you want or you don't need to because there's actually, with doing the darker color like this, there's actually an automatic line, per se. All right, so then you can do this. And keep in mind, too, guys, that I am a left-handed person. So when I'm doing these, you might feel more comfortable doing them the opposite direction than what I'm doing. Now, if you notice on this one, one side is wiggly. You put your brush down and you just, I'm mopping the floor, I'm mopping the floor, I'm mopping the floor, and I'm up on my chisel edge. I get a clean edge here. Not as easy as painting on glass. That's why I like painting on glass. But I'm putting my brush down, turning it, and then I'm easing up on it and pulling it. And then I pull it through. Wax paper is a perfect surface to practice on, just so you know. It's cheap, disposable, and your brush flows awesomely on it. All right, so then I'm trying to think. You know, you can choose to do, you know, whether you're doing a, a big, 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 and then little, and then more wiggly type of a leaf. It really just depends on the movements that you're doing, and if you, you know, just wiggling it in and out, you can create a different looking leaf. Okay, I'm not sure if you saw that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. I wiggled it up here, my brush pushed down, I'm going to go a little bit out and then down. And then do the same thing over here. Both sides don't actually have to be identical. You can do a little, make them look a little different, gives the, more interest, up to you. When you're doing a design, it's kind of fun to, even if they're similar in the strokes that you're using, rotating, having some with the lighter color on the outside, the darker color on the outside, a little bit of the dark and the light. It's just mix it up a little bit. That makes it a lot more interesting. All right, so if you're going to do your just your simple little one stroke petals, you can do it like this. It's just basically turning your brush a little bit, going like that. And then I like to do them in threes. If you watch me very much, you know that I like odd numbers as far as painting goes. And then you can just do it like that. Now here's kind of a fun leaf. It's kind of like that. But then you can go over it going the same direction with the colors. You can do it like that. Or make it more interesting and do your base. And then you can load your brush again and go like that. That gives it a different look. And then I know people that actually do their leaves like this. And then they'll come back up and then spread it out and go like that. I might need to get another piece of paper. That's why I say there's a variety of different types of leaves depending on the type of painting you're doing. Uh, it just, it really can vary. This person will go like this and push it out and go like that and pull it back. Or you can make it thinner. You can pull it like that too. Good. Whoops, that wasn't a good sample. Pull like that and go like that. I need 
I need it to flow. Let's see, let's see if it will look better like that. Not sure I like that beginning and ending. But you see, when you get the gist, it's fun, no matter which way you do it. Uh, let me grab grab another piece of paper. That's why I said it's kind of fun. You start going on these and you can see, I mean, make a vine that you can have them coming off of and then just practice. See what you like. When you're moving your brush, you're getting a little bit of the, the light and the dark. As you can see, that makes it a little more interesting also. I keep going like this. I, like I said, I, I do the one stroke kind of, but then I have my own little twist in it. Whether that's good or bad, that I don't know, but... You can see I'm doing them big. And then I'm going to just start here. Keep my green on the... It's not moving us. So I say the paper can be a little bit more difficult to paint on. And then you just bring your vine through it, if you choose to, because this is the one where you have the automatic darkness in the center. And you can do this kind, and go like that, pull it. Like I said, it, a lot of times it helps people if they do the V to start off with, and then you do a couple starter strokes before you do it and then you can just keep wiggling it really a lot like that so that they're just smaller waves and not the big big ones like I was showing you and one other thing I did not show you let's see how well this works this is a little bit more difficult even for me because I don't I don't typically tend to do it this way but I'm going to show you, make sure I'm on the paper here. Yeah, my paper was wet, if you can tell here. But I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to bring the brush up, twist it around, and have it go like that. It's just giving a little bit of a flipping motion. Like I said, it's a little bit more difficult to do. But it can show movement. And you can do it either side, but I typically would do the side, you know, finish off one side and then bring it around and go like that. And then you can, you know, run your little vein in there if you want to hold it on. This is perfect for just doing your fun little one stroke leaves. And then just bring it off the vine like that. You can also do these as fillers if you want. Whether you're going to go like this, do it the opposite direction here, you know, you get the gist and just go back and forth from one side to the other. There's so many different options, like I said. It's, I really like leaves, and I'll say that periodically when I'm painting because I can get a little crazy with them. Yeah, I really can. And I think I did show you the one where the side is smoother. I like that. They both can be smooth, actually. Just fill it in a little bit if it didn't get all of it. Like that. So you can see what I'm saying is there's just a lot of variety, a lot of different styles. You know, some people will paint them a, a solid green and then add a variety of different greens to it to give it some more um, interest, make it come off the page more. Um, but I hope this helps. I hope you know showing you some different styles 
helps you. If you have any questions, please do the comments down below. Ask me any questions you have. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. I am uh, hopefully going to be doing more of these type of tutorials, uh, taking maybe a little bit slower process and showing you bit by bit how I'm creating a design when it's you know all put together, but I'm going to demonstrate it one piece at a time and then put the piece together at the end of the week. So look forward to that. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you're new to viewing here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, notification bell, so that you get notified whenever I do something new, submit a new video, and make sure you also hit that share button underneath the video so you can share it with your friends and family. I would appreciate it. And until the next video, you have a good one. Thanks again for stopping by.